Hello, everyone, and welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to be looking at a viewer question that is all about the losses created by solder mask on microstrip lines. Now, this question looks specifically at solder mask losses. We're actually going to show some data that illustrates what type of losses you can expect on your microstrip lines, and I'll show you how to remove solder mask from microstrip lines in Altium Designer. Make sure to hop into your copy of Altium Designer and follow along, and let's get started. So before we get started, let's take a look at that viewer question. Arjit Das writes, Hi Zach, does the solder mask layer add any noticeable loss in practical scenarios, since its thickness might be very low as compared to our PCB laminate thickness corresponding to our RF trace? I once did a simulation of a trace with solder mask as a dielectric layer defined on top of it, DK of approximately 3.2, DF equals 0.025, thickness equals 35 micron, and the result was hardly any different than the case without one. But practically, does it affect significantly? I would like to know. The answer is yes, it actually does have a practical effect, and whether or not you notice the effect of the solder mask depends on the frequency at which you are operating. In some cases, you could have such rough copper in your simulation, and I don't know if you used rough copper in your simulation, but if your copper is overly rough, it could actually create so much loss at certain frequencies that it could be difficult to distinguish the case with solder mask versus without solder mask on rough copper. So first, let's look at the typical material properties of solder mask and PCBs, as well as what the expected thickness values are. And then I'll show you some data that actually outlines the level of losses that you can expect when you get to progressively higher frequencies. So let's look at the typical cross section of a trace with solder mask. So here I have my layer, here I have my copper, and you can see here I've drawn it with a trapezoidal profile so that it indicates etching. And then above that we have our solder mask and it essentially goes kind of like this. Now the solder mask layer, of course, only sits on the top layer. And then at some distance below the trace, we have our ground plane, and this defines our microstrip trace. So here I have the copper, and coded onto the copper is of course our solder mask. So this thickness of this solder mask in the areas farther away from this trace is specified under the IPC-SM-840D standard. And that thickness here in this region away from the trace is generally specified to be greater than one mil thickness. Now here in this region where the solder mask wraps over the corner of the trace, this dimension can be very small and it can actually get down as low as maybe about 0.3 mils in this region where it wraps over. And then here above the trace, the solder mask thickness can go down to about 0.5 mil. So the effect of losses varies where you look along the trace. And depending on how your simulation is set up, and depending on the thickness of the solder mask that you use, as well as the material properties, you may not actually notice the effect of this thickness in different regions of the board. And you may not actually be able to see the losses. Now, remember, this thickness variation is important because the electromagnetic field exists everywhere around the trace. So if I just start drawing out field lines, you can see here where all of the different field lines start to converge and terminate at the ground plane, and they do pass through this solder mask everywhere. So whether or not the solder mask actually affects the strength of the electromagnetic field depends on two parameters. It first depends on the DK value and then the DF value. And these values vary depending on which type of solder mask material you're using. So there's an IPC APEX paper from 2016, and they looked at material properties in that paper for two different solder mask materials. One that was kind of a standard run-of-the-mill solder mask material with DK of approximately 4, and then DF value of approximately 0.02. And these were tested at 1 megahertz. Then they also looked at a low loss version, and the low loss version I think is closer to what the question is looking at. In that low loss solder mask material, they have DK value of approximately 3.5, and then a DF value of approximately 
eight, so about half of this. So this is the range of different values that you could see in different commercially available solder masks, and they could even be tested at different frequencies. Here, these values are at one megahertz, but in this low loss version that would be intended for like a high speed PCB or an RF PCB operating at lower frequencies, these were tested at one gigahertz. So if you are going to do any simulations involving solder masks, just make sure you have the right data from the data sheet and make sure you know at which frequency that was tested. Because sometimes a simulator will try to model the effect of dispersion in these material parameters over a broad frequency range. And it will do that by knowing or by having you input the different DK and DF values at a specific frequency and then it will extrapolate to all other values within your simulation using a well-known dielectric model, usually like a wideband Debye model or some other model. And that's especially the case if you then place a dielectric layer on top of this trace and try to do the simulation. So now we have to ask, what happens if we remove this solder mask? If we remove the solder mask, we have a exposed copper trace. And that exposed copper trace could, of course, get oxidized or damaged. And so we would like to protect that trace to some extent. So in the case where we have solder mask pulled off and then we have some copper trace here, we'll actually normally apply a plating layer. So the plating layer also affects the losses and specifically the type of material used to build up that plating will have an effect on losses. So in general, where we have this exposed microstrip line and we have a plating applied to it, we would like to avoid, where possible, nickel-based platings. So the reason we would like to avoid nickel-based platings is two reasons. First of all, nickel is ferromagnetic. So it increases magnetic losses or the losses in the magnetic field during propagation along the trace. The other reason that we like to avoid nickel-based platings is because nickel, when used as a layer to bond to some other metal, can increase the roughness of that other metal that it's bonding to. So it can create a rough layer in this plating material. And of course, if you increase the roughness, you then increase the losses. So how does this all compare to a solder mask versus the exposed plating? Let's take a look at some data that actually compares all of these different materials, and we'll even see an example of the roughness that we can expect in a nickel-based plating. So this slide is taken from one of the presentations I've given in the past, and what this slide is showing is a comparison of different plating materials in terms of their losses. And so all of the different plating materials that are typically used in different types of PCBs are shown on the right. And this brown curve here corresponds to the solder mask. Now here on the left, you can see some examples of the roughness that's created when you have nickel gold layers deposited on copper. And these microscope images were taken from this paper that I have cited down here at the bottom of the slide. Now for a moment, I just wanna compare what's going on here on the right hand side with these graphs. So what you can see is that really low frequencies when you're at about one gigahertz, there is a difference in losses but it's so small that you really don't notice. It's not until you get past about two or three gigahertz that all of the losses start to really get different with all of these different plating materials. On the right hand side, you see with OSP, Organic Solderability Preserve, and Immersion Silver, you have losses that are basically the same as the bare copper with no solder mask applied. Now, if you take the bare copper and then you just add the solder mask, you get this brown curve. So this is where you'll start to see some really significant differences if you start looking at really high frequencies. Now, interestingly, solder mask produces about the same level of loss as immersion tin. And you can see that here with this green curve. And then once you get to the nickel containing plating materials like Enipig and Enig, then you start to see really significant losses. And then you can see here that they approach about a one dB per unit length difference. So this is in one dB per inch difference between Enig and some of these lower loss platings. The moral of the story here is if you want to ensure that you have low loss on your exposed microstrip lines, you need to select the proper plating and you should probably avoid nickel-based platings. So should you use immersion silver? Well, one of the problems with immersion silver is that it tarnishes. 
What about OSP? One of the problems with OSP is that it has a short shelf life. So you need to weigh your different options when you're looking for an appropriate plating for an RF board. I would suggest immersion tin as one alternative if you are using very lossy solder mask. Of course, the other option is to just go with a lower loss solder mask. You can check out some lower loss solder mask options on the internet and make sure to refer to the presentation that I have linked in the description. That link goes to the IPC Apex presentation and in there you can see the specific solder mask material that they measured and qualified as a low loss solder mask material. So now that we have a comparison of the losses that we can expect with solder mask versus platings, let's take a look at how to remove solder mask from microstrip lines in All Team Designer. I'm inside of our power amplifier module project that we've looked at in several other videos. And here, what I wanna show is that on some of these traces, we do have solder mask removed. And you can see this if you just take this and put it into 3D. So you can see here this trace coming out of U2, which is our oscillator, going into U1, our power amplifier, and then that uh, feed line that comes out from the output and then goes to our SMA connector, all of those traces have the solder mask removed because we can see the copper here in the top layer. So you'll know that solder mask is removed because if you look in the top solder layer, you will see that there is a line drawn along that particular trace. So if we want to remove the solder mask along, let's say, this long trace here passing from C9 and then below C18 into this connector, uh, we can do that pretty easily. So the easiest way to do that is to just go to your copper layer and then select the track that you want and make sure that in the uh, selection filter you have tracks selected and you can hit the tab key and it'll select all of the copper along that interconnect. So I'm gonna do that on this example. Now with all of this selected, I wanna copy this against some reference point. After I copy this, I'm gonna move these tracks to my top solder layer. Now you'll see here that the ghost wires reappear. Now I'm going to just paste those original tracks back in put them out at my same reference point, and then you can see here all of those tracks reappear. So when I go back into 3D, now you can see that this section of track is totally exposed and all of the solder mask has been removed. Now, what about plating? Can we specify plating in our layer stack manager? Well, as it turns out, we actually can do that. Just go into the layer stack manager and you wanna to go to the top layer. With the top layer selected, you can then uh, right click and hit insert layer above and you'll see there's this option for surface finish. Just select surface finish. You can see here under the material option, there are several different options available. By default, tin lead is selected, but you have some other options here if you go into this select material dialog from the layer stack manager. So that's how you remove the solder mask and then that's how you add the plating in your layer stack manager. And just note that you have to enforce stack symmetry in order for it to automatically appear on the bottom side of the board. So as soon as I hit stack symmetry, I want to mirror the top half down. We'll just hit okay. And then you can see here that the surface finish also appears on the bottom layer. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. As always, we love getting your comments and questions. So please don't hesitate to leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And of course, make sure to check out the links in the description. You'll find a link to that IPC Apex presentation, as well as some other blogs that describe the different types of platings you can find in PCBs. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.